Hello, I'm JW. Now, in a previous video, we saw a thing about energy and power and how you can work out the total energy used by a piece of equipment just by seeing how much power it's going to be using and how long it is turned on for. And in the previous episode, had a look at a kettle because that's a fairly straightforward item. But the key thing about a kettle is that when it's turned on, it's using power constantly at a fixed rate. So it's not something that's going to change over time. And again, because it's only on for a few minutes, it's pretty easy to see how long it has been turned on for. But unfortunately, most other pieces of equipment don't work like that, because typically they're going to be turned on for long periods or even permanently. And then the other major problem is that although something may, say, have a rating of, say, 400 watts, it doesn't mean it uses 400 watts for the whole time. It may use considerably less than that quite a lot of the time and only use that as a maximum for some of the time. And a good example of this is a refrigerator or freezer may use, say, three, 400 watts or something when the compressor is actually running. But of course, once the entire temperature has reached the particular setting, the compressor will turn off and it will just sit there using pretty much nothing at all. And of course, if you open the door and the light comes on, well, again, that's going to use slightly more than when the door was closed. And again, depending on the ambient temperature outside and how often the door is open and closed and whatever, will determine how often the compressor runs for and all kinds of other factors. So for those sorts of things, you can't really just work it out from the displayed power on the item. And if you attempt to do that, you'll end up with something which is way more than it actually is. So uh, the usual way to do this and work out the actual uh, energy use of something is to get something like one of these. Now, these things are sold under various different names. Kill a Watt is a popular name for one of these, and uh, you can get these in various types. This has a UK plug and a UK stock it on, but if you live in other areas, you can get them with the appropriate uh, type of connectors on there. And basically, you just plug this in to your outlet, plug the appliance in the front, and then you can determine how much power going to use, the voltage supplied, frequency and current and all the rest of it, and most importantly is the total energy used, and that's why it's got the yellow button on the front there. Again, that may vary on other models, but uh, that's going to tell you how much energy it uses over a certain amount of time. Now this is the one we've got here. This is a pretty old one. It's at least 20 years old and it could actually be considerably older than that, but you can still buy these in this uh, form factor and very similar looking designs. Pretty straightforward, plugs in the outlet on the back here for your power going in. Appliance goes in the front, and then you've got this display and various buttons to select various things to see. And the most important one, which is the uh, yellow one on this one, the coloured button, which will display kilowatt hours. And that is uh, the units of electricity that you're paying for. Currently in the UK, it's about 35 pence per kilowatt hour. May be reducing uh, shortly, but uh, obviously it's uh, fairly expensive at the moment. Now I'll just have a quick look through the buttons here. Most important one is the yellow one, but uh, we'll just cover the others anyway. Uh, voltage is what we've got by default here, so 244 volts, so we're just under 245. Pretty typical for the UK. It's supposed to be 230, but there's a very wide margin on that, so 245 or whatever. That's absolutely fine, and basically what you would expect. Uh, next line we've got amps, which is going to be the current. Uh, in this case, 0.14 amps, or 140 milliamps. Just got a small item uh, plugged in on this, so I'm not using the kettle at the moment because that's very noisy. Moving along, we have watts. Now, watts will actually be the power, and similar to what we saw previously with the kettle, that was around 2,200 watts. This particular item is only 28. Just a uh, small thing we got over to the side there. And uh, underneath, we've got this other one here, which is a VA. And if you have a look at that, that is 33 for this one. Now, watts and VA can be the same, and if it was just, say, like a little heater or kettle or something, then they would be. However, most other things, including anything that's electronic, most of the time these will not be the same, and the difference between these is what's called power factor. Watts is what you're actually paying for, certainly on a domestic installation, so in that case 28 watts is the power it's going to be using. However, VA is what it actually basically says. It's volts multiplied by amps, or V multiplied by A. In this case, it's 33. So the reason for that is that the current and the voltage, both being AC, are not perfectly lined up. In this case, current is either shifted away from the voltage slightly, and therefore you get a slightly higher reading compared to the actual wattage. We may cover power factor on a separate video. And... Uh, Frequency is 49.9, it's supposed to be 50, so it's slightly under on this case. And then PF, the bottom there, PF, is the power factor, which in this case 0.85. I 
Ideally, it should be 1, in which case the watts and VA would be the same, but as we saw previously, they're not. And the difference between those is basically the uh, power factor there of 0.85. However, the main deal with this is the one at the end here, which is kilowatt hours. Now, it says zero at the moment because it's only been on for a short time. But uh, if we left this on for a long time, this would gradually increase. And kilowatt hours, they say, what you're paying for from the electricity company. So when it's got to 1.00, then you've used one unit of electricity. And in the UK at the moment, that will cost you around 35 pence. Now, so if you're going to use this for something like a fridge or anything else, it's a good idea to put this on for a long period of time, certainly at least 24 hours, because otherwise it's going to be unrealistic, because certainly in the daytime, the fridge is likely going to use more than it would do overnight, because people are going to be opening the door and whatever, and also things like temperature and whatever can also affect that. And uh, in case you forgot how long it's on, if you press the button again, it will then show you how long it's been on for. Just six minutes in this case. So... That just gives you a direct reading of how much electricity has been used versus how long it's been turned on. And then you can work that out how much you use in a week or a year or whatever else. Now a quick note about power factor while we've got this device out. In this case, power factor is 0.85, which is not terrible, but obviously not ideal. One would be the ideal. For domestic suppliers, it doesn't actually matter in the slightest because you're not paying for VA, you're paying for watts. So whether the power factor is good, bad or whatever, it doesn't make any difference to what you're actually paying. That's also why those dubious boxes are claimed to be energy saving that you plug in and have a green light on the front and just have a capacitor stuck inside and supposedly save you loads of money. They don't save you anything because, first of all, they're just fake junk. But even if they did improve power factor, completely relevant because say, it doesn't make any difference for domestic suppliers whether the power factor is good or bad. Now it can be a problem on commercial or industrial supplies where it may well meter the uh, difference there, so say 28 watts or 33 VA. Some commercial supplies may be metered on VA instead, in which case it certainly would make a difference, but there are no domestic supplies which uh, work like that, so it is mostly irrelevant, and in any case you can't really do much about it because it comes down to the individual pieces of equipment. If you've got a large installation, there are power factor correction things you can have installed, but those are far too expensive and completely out of the scope of putting it in your house. And all the power factor is here, the 0.85, it's just the ratio between the two. So 33 VA multiplied by the 0.85 is 28, basically. So that's the only calculation that's involved there. Now if you want to get one of these things they're available from all the usual places so uh, just search up for uh, plug-in energy monitor or energy monitor or whatever else and uh, you'll no doubt find hundreds of them for sale. They're probably all going to be made in the same place anyhow. The main thing it's going to show you is kilowatt hours and the time it's been plugged in. The rest of it isn't particularly relevant for any purposes other than just seeing a bit of a novelty as to what the various things actually are. And uh, say do plug it in for a decent length of time, 24 hours would be recommended. And uh, the other thing just to be aware of these, some of these are not very good at very low current. So if you plug something in that's only sort of 1 or 2 watts or something, you may find that the readings it gives are somewhat inaccurate. However, it doesn't really matter because if you've got something that's only 1 or 2 watts, it's costing you almost nothing to run anyhow, even if it was left on 24 hours a day. But for things in the sort of 10 plus watt range, usually not a problem there. I mean this thing is a 28 so that's uh, perfectly fine. So that is it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.